Hi, my name is John, and this is a video on hepatic encephalopathy. As the name suggests, it's a problem with the liver causing a problem in the brain. Uh, so we're going to go over physiology, pathology, signs and symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment. So ultimately, this is a problem with uh, excess ammonia in the blood. And so for basic physiology, uh, in a healthy individual, we generate ammonia via gluconeogenesis, the breakdown of amino acids, as well as the colonic bacteria breaking down the protein in our diet. So that, that ammonia gets brought to the liver, where it is processed via the urea cycle. The ammonia gets converted to urea, where it is then put back into circulation, is brought to the kidneys, and is renally excreted. So that's when everything is going well. So in hepatic encephalopathy, you have some underlying liver pathology that could be uh, due to hep C infection, it could be due to alcoholic cirrhosis, something that had a uh, chronic already damaged liver. In addition, now you have some acute event on top of that, which exacerbates that underlying pathology and leads to the hepatic encephalopathy. And that could be a number of things. That could be um, increased ammonia production, uh, often caused by a GI bleed. The, blood in our, uh, the protein in our blood goes into the colon, is then broken down in the same way as the protein in our diet, that leads to increased ammonia levels, and that just, um, uh, is too much for our liver to handle, and so you get increased ammonia levels in circulation. Could be caused by severe constipation leading to decreased excretion and thus increased absorption of ammonia. Uh, it could also be caused by things that uh, exacerbate the already damaged liver. It could be an acute infection, um, it could be an alcoholic binge, something that uh, further impairs the already damaged liver. So any of those lead to increased ammonia levels in the blood. Uh, that ammonia goes into circulation and crosses the blood-brain barrier where it uh, combines with alpha-ketoglutarate to form glutamate. The glutamate uh, in, in astrocytes then acts as, uh, increases the oncotic pressure, which then pulls water into those cells, causing cerebral edema. Uh, in addition, some say that glutamate as a neurotransmitter can also cause symptoms on its own, separately from the edema. But ultimately, uh, the patient will then start to present, present with CNS symptoms such as uh, lethargy, uh, personality changes, um, disorientation, uh, and ultimately possibly coma and death. They may start to look like this guy over here. Uh, in addition, you'll have uh, underlying, due to the underlying liver pathology, you would expect to see uh, signs of liver damage. So you would expect uh, jaundice, scleral, scleral icterus, uh, peripheral edema, uh, varices, signs of uh, underlying liver pathology. There are other things that can cause the similar CNS symptoms, such as uremic encephalopathy, which is failed excretion of nitrogenous waste products. Uh, but you would not expect to see the uh, signs of liver pathology in those cases. You would expect to see more signs of kidney pathology. Um, so once you're, if you suspect that this is hepatic encephalopathy, to diagnose it, there are a few things you can do. Um, you need to determine that it's uh, failed liver function, and so you can do that with uh, liver function tests, you can do that with imaging, ultrasound, or CT, uh, you could also do that with a liver biopsy, um, and in addition you would really expect to see elevated levels of ammonia in the blood. That may not necessarily correlate with the severity of the symptoms, so higher levels of ammonia may not uh, necessarily indicate worse symptoms, uh, but you would expect to see uh, higher levels of ammonia than baseline. Uh, for treatment, once you've identified it as hepatic encephalopathy, hepatic encephalopathy, there are a few things you can do for treatment. Um, the first is because a lot of the ammonia is produced by the colonic bacteria breaking down the protein in our diet, is you can kill these colonic bacteria. So you can do that with uh, antibiotics. The two most common are neomycin and rifaximin. The neomycin and rifaximin um, Again, just kill these bacteria, decreasing ammonia production, uh, thereby decreasing absorption and uh, increasing excretion of protein. The other way you can treat it is with something called lactulose. And lactulose actually acidifies the colon. Um, so because the ammonia then is in a more acidic environment, it gets converted to ammonium. Um, and as ammonium is a cation, uh, it cannot be absorbed uh, from the colon into the portal system, and so that increases excretion. Uh, this is also um, an osmotic laxative, 
So this is particularly useful in patients where this is all caused by uh, severe constipation. Kills two birds with one stone in that way. Uh, and that is the uh, physiology, pathology, diagnosis, and treatment of hepatic encephalopathy. Thanks. Should old acquaintance be forgotten?